Now, going back to Don, you were mentioning about the, the glory days of Everton. Looking at the team now, where on the pitch do they need to strengthen for them to get back to that? Because clearly, like you said, you would stick with Carlo Ancelotti. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think from the back, I think that's where Carlo will, will, will start looking. Um, and Jordan Pickford doesn't convince me. Um, I work with Peter Schmeichel a lot, who is one of the very, very best goalkeepers that we've ever seen in the Premier League. And he concurs with me with Jordan Pickford. That is actually very emotional. And I've seen Jordan Pickford make some unbelievable saves. Then all of a sudden, he's sort of punching the air and he's high-fiving everyone. And then Peter Schmeichel said to me, actually, when he does that, what happens to him when he makes a bad save? What you can't be, according to Peter Schmeichel, is a goalkeeper that his confidence is so, so high, then when you have a bad game, be so low. Goalkeepers, the very best goalkeepers, have an even keel and they keep themselves grounded. So I think for Carlo Ancelotti, he might look at that position, he might think he's England's number one, and he might think, well, that's one area that I'm not going to touch. But I certainly think at the back, I think you build a side around Luca Dean because I love him as a player. Do not let him go. You've got good fullbacks behind in Leighton Baines, and he'll be a good character if he signs a new contract. Guys like Seamus Coleman. You know, Michael Keane is a very, very steady player. I'm not sure if Yerry Mean is the answer to play alongside him. Mason Holgate certainly is. In midfield, I don't think there's too many problems. I just think if they could try and find a prolific striker, which is not easy, to play alongside Dominic Carvalho. And me and Gary were texting you know, throughout the game, and I had my feelings on what I thought Carlo would have done. And I thought Carlo Ancelotti would have took Dolphy Sigurdsson off, which he did. And then I thought he would have put Moise Keane on and then played Richarlison off the left-hand side. Well, he didn't. He went with Bernard. So I was a little bit dubious on why he went with, with Bernard because he didn't really affect the game. But certainly, I think if you can get a goal scorer, because all, all teams in the Premier League and across Europe, they, they need the guy that's going to hit 20-plus goals a season. And you hit those numbers, you get a lot closer to the top six. So just one very quick final one, Don. Uh, you spoke about Jordan Pickford earlier and we're talking about transfers and replacements. Now, who would you replace Jordan Pickford with? Well, that's a very good question, and that's the question that Carlo Ancelotti will be looking at. He'll be looking across Europe, and he'll be thinking, right, you know, which goalkeepers out there? Because it's easy playing fantasy football. It's easy saying, oh, why can't we try and get Tishtegen from Barcelona? Well, you're not going to get him, and you're not going to get Jan Olblak from from uh, from Atletico Madrid. So the scouting system has to be there, has to be in place. If you're asking me who they should go and get, knowing him from what I've seen this season, I think Dean Henderson from Sheffield United. But he might want to go back to Manchester United and be the number one. You know, so Oli's then got a problem. If you're Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, do you want that battle? Do you want Dean Henderson coming back into your football club when David De Gea is actually not playing too well? So if you're asking me for a name, I think Dean Henderson will be the man.